Hey everybody, it's Shady from Norman S. Wright. In last week's video, I talked about A2L refrigerants, and I mentioned R410A, which is being phased out of new equipment, and R32 and R454B, which are going to be the replacements. So this week, I want to talk about the properties of these three refrigerants, but let's get started. <music> Let's put our refrigerants up here as the headers. I want to start with global warming potential, GWP, since it's the reason we're phasing out refrigerants in the first place. R410A has a GWP of 2080, R32 has a GWP of 675, and R454B has a GWP of 466. So I'm going to leave this table in the middle and I'm going to move up and do the details around it. GWP measures how much a greenhouse gas traps heat in the atmosphere relative to carbon dioxide over a specific period of time. So R410A's 2088 GWP means that it traps 2088 times as much heat compared to CO2. The current refrigerant phase out that we're doing now sets a maximum GWP for non-industrial HVAC equipment at 750. The GWP only tells part of the story about a refrigerant's environmental impact. It doesn't account for the emissions generated by the energy HVAC systems use during operation, which is often the largest contributor to the system's overall impact. Let's go back to our table. This is why total emissions is also important. R410A's total emissions is 17263 kilograms of CO2 equivalent. R32's is 14,916, which is 13.6% lower, and R454B is 15,008, which is 13.1% lower. Total emissions takes into account both direct and indirect emissions. Direct emissions come from refrigerant leakage, which is where GWP would come in. Indirect emissions come from the energy the system uses over its life cycle. Even with a low GWP refrigerant, a system with poor energy efficiency can have a significant CO2 emissions from its daily operations. Move back to our table. So I mentioned in the last video, R410A is a 50-50 mix of R32 and R125. R32 is obviously 100% R32, and R454B is 68.9% R32 and 31.1% R1234YF. This is important because of temperature glide. Because they're blends, R410A and R454B will have temperature glide. R32 is not a blend, so it will not have temperature glide. So let's move this over and look at glide. Temperature glide is the difference between the boiling and condensation temperatures of a refrigerant when it's under constant pressure. Single component refrigerants have no glide. They change phases consistently. A significant temperature glide might mean that you have uneven cooling and heating, and this can affect your system performance, but the system should be designed to account for it. Now let's go back to our table and look at system capacity. We'll use R410A as the baseline, so let's just call that 100%. R32 would have greater than 110% capacity, and R454B would have greater than 97% capacity. Let's move over here. A higher capacity may allow smaller systems to achieve the same heating and cooling output meaning it could cool or heat spaces faster, reducing runtime and potentially lowering energy consumption. Let me move this over a little bit. I think I'm too close. Go back to our table and look at system efficiency. Again, R410A is baseline, so let's just call that 100%. R32 would be greater than 107% efficiency, and R454B would be greater than 102%. Let's slide over here now. Efficiency basically tells us how well the refrigerant and the system work together to provide cooling or heating. The higher the efficiency, the lower the energy costs. And lastly, let's go back to the table and look at refrigerant charge. Again, R410A is the baseline, so I'm going to leave this blank. R32 has up to a 40% smaller refrigerant charge, and R454B has up to a 10% smaller refrigerant charge compared to R410A. Charge size refers to how much refrigerant the system needs to operate. 
Smaller charge sizes reduce both cost and environmental impact. And if there is ever a leak, less refrigerant means less refrigerant to leak and less potential greenhouse gas emissions. So let's bring everything back on screen now. That's an overview of the differences between R410A, R32, and R454B, which you'll hear a lot more about in the future. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and next week is a holiday, so I'll see you in two weeks.